From miracle cures for cancer to the dangers of eating cucumbers, prepare to be shocked by what some people are posting on YouTube that is inaccurate and misleading and confusing the heck out of cancer survivors. I felt the need to make this video because I don't want anyone to be fooled by them. Even if you're watching something and thinking, well, this doesn't really sound right, but maybe it could be true, it's probably not. The third example I'll be going over in this video may ruffle a few feathers for those who are a fan of Dr. Joe Dispenza. I'm also going to make another video for you next called the best cancer advice on YouTube because there are some wonderful and honest nutritionists, doctors, and healthcare professionals like myself sharing our knowledge with the best of intentions to help people, not scam them or give them some shocking fake news just so that they can get viewers and subscribers and make money. The first example I have for you of the worst cancer advice on YouTube is a channel called Dr. John. It's completely computer generated, so someone is using this fake attractive doctor in the photos, who you never actually see in any of the videos, and they're also using a fake robot sounding voice, red flag number one. But their most popular video titled, Shocking Foods to Avoid with Cucumbers for Cancer Dementia Prevention 201. I mean, that doesn't even make sense. Anyways, this video claims that you should never eat raw cucumbers together with raw carrots because it could harm your health, or cucumbers with bananas because you could potentially overdose on potassium, which they claim can cause muscle weakness, paralysis, chronic numbness in the hands and feet, and even lead to arrhythmia and acute blood pressure issues. Really? So yes, too much potassium can be really dangerous for people with certain health conditions like high blood pressure, but honestly, eating a banana followed by a slice of cucumber is not going to produce these side effects for anyone. They're just trying to exaggerate and scare people for shock value. What's disturbing is that this video has over 800,000 views. I was thinking maybe the majority of these people watched it because they were thinking like, okay, this sounds ridiculous, but I need to know what it's about. But then I read some of the comments and some of these poor people were saying things like, I've been eating cucumbers for years and I had no idea. Or I'm so confused because everybody on the internet is saying different things about cancer nutrition, so I don't know what to believe. Ugh. And the worst thing is, this Dr. John channel has over 15,000 subscribers. So obviously a lot of people are believing what this guy or robot is saying. If you want to create a computer-generated faceless YouTube channel, that's fine, that's totally legal. But whoever's behind these absurd videos providing misleading information to vulnerable people about health and nutrition, it should not be allowed. But some of the most common and dangerous advice circulating on YouTube is that you can cure cancer naturally without having any medical treatments like surgery or chemo if you follow a certain diet or eat only certain foods. This is so frustrating. Yes, eating certain foods or following certain diets can certainly help your body beat cancer. I even have a ton of videos on this myself, but they should never replace medical treatments, ever. You may have come across some videos on how to starve cancer or starving cancer cells. Okay, so first of all, starving cancer is not the same as starving yourself. Unfortunately, we can't cure cancer just by not eating. I'm not saying that fasting can't potentially help your body kill cancer cells. It certainly has a lot of health benefits. But if you were able to cure cancer just by fasting, if it were that easy, obviously it would be a thing, of a form of treatment, and less people would be dying from cancer. So anyone that claims that you can starve cancer cells by not eating sugar or processed foods or anything else is likely trying to give you false hope. The best way to increase your odds of beating cancer is to have medical treatments and follow a healthy diet. There's a well-known professor, Dr. Thomas Seyfried, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, who's been interviewed by several popular YouTubers and doctors, and he best explains why you can't fully starve cancer cells by fasting. Basically, he explains how eating glucose, which we get from eating sugar or carbs, is the main energy for cancer cells. So if we eat little to no glucose, we can come close to starving cancer cells, but not fully. Cancer cells will still get the energy they need to survive from elsewhere, even when we're fasting, but reducing your glucose intake has been shown to significantly help in some cases. Anyways, I recommend watching any of his videos, but while we're talking about sugar being a major source of energy for cancer cells, and this is no disrespect to any dietitian or oncologist that is still telling their patients to eat sugar, but I think the reason they're giving this advice is because they aren't fully aware of how sugar affects cancer at a cellular and molecular level and that scientific research is providing more and more evidence that sugar is horrible for everyone, especially cancer patients. Although sugar doesn't directly cause cancer like tobacco or alcohol, it can indirectly lead to cancer in several ways like chronic inflammation, obesity, or diabetes. I go over this a bit more in my video called Quitting Sugar for 30 Days Post-Cancer, which I'll link for you in the description below to watch next. 
As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, what I'm going to be talking about next may ruffle a few feathers if you're a fan of Dr. Joe Dispenza. Because I know some of you are probably like, I know that guy, I love that guy, his meditations are awesome, and he has over a million followers on YouTube, so he must be legit. In case you've never heard of him before, he's a New York Times bestselling author and a world-renowned authority on the power of the mind-body connection. Now, some of his work is very unique and intelligent and has helped hundreds of thousands of people because he teaches the power of positive thinking and meditation and gives people hope that they can make massive positive changes in their lives, like overcoming negative beliefs or trauma. He's also a huge advocate and educator around the power of visualization and how our personalities create our reality. For these reasons, I think his work on meditation and self-help is wonderful. However, he also claims that he's able to physically heal people without medical intervention, and this is where I have deep concerns. He holds these insanely expensive retreats where he claims to heal people on stage who have everything from genetic disorders to stage 4 cancer. If you go to his website or YouTube channel, he has a ton of testimonials from people he's healed at these conferences. And in his interviews, he's always talking about clinical trials he's doing where he's healing people as well. But what's interesting is that when you dig a little deeper, he has zero scientific proof or any evidence of any clinical trials or even articles he's written on how he's healing these people. All you can find are stories from him or testimonials from these people who, for all we know, could easily be paid actors. But don't you think that if he were healing people with stage 4 cancer without any medical treatment, he would be willing to share how he's done it so that we can help more people? So that other doctors can use his blueprint to make the millions of dollars he's making to heal people? And I know that in his interviews, he describes the science behind what he does in terms of physics, neuroscience, and psychology, but he explains it in a way to make the average person think they understand what he's saying, but he uses so much scientific jargon that they actually don't, and real scientists, who have a real understanding of physics and gene expression, know that he's not really telling us how he heals people. But he's such a good speaker, and he's so confident that it makes everything he says sound legit because it's so scientific, but it actually leaves people more confused because they're not experts in these fields, nor will they ever look into the science behind what he's saying. They just hear what they want to believe. And for someone who wants to believe that they can be healed, I can understand why they would listen to it and say, there's the proof right there. He just explained it to us, and there's hope that I can be cured too. There's a lot of people that have given up on mainstream medicine because their treatments haven't worked, so they're turning to this as a last resort, and he's capitalizing on these people to become very wealthy. Now, as I said before, if this man can heal people from stage 4 cancer and it's that easy, why are we not doing clinical trials on this? Why are we not trying to get this information out to other doctors? Like, how is this guy claiming that his alternative methods work better than mainstream medicine, but then he's not willing to test his methods or share his processes with the world so that we can replicate them? He's essentially claiming to be above science. Like, as if nobody before him has ever studied these things before. You see, in the field of science, whenever somebody releases new findings through journal articles or publications, they have other scientists review them. It's called peer review. And this is really important because it weeds out inaccurate information to protect us. Joe Dispenza has never published any of his work in peer-reviewed scientific journals. So naturally, the scientific community is raising their concerns about the validity of his claims, calling him a pseudoscientist, which essentially means a fake scientist. The problem with pseudoscience is that it doesn't have to pass any regulations to get to the public eye. And it's always the claims that are most exaggerated and exciting that gets the most attention and creates false hope. The problem is that anyone can say anything and people will believe them, but they won't look into whether their research has been reviewed to back up their claims. So please understand that my skepticism, like other scientists and healthcare professionals, comes with good reason. When I was researching my content for this video, I asked some of my colleagues to share their thoughts on Dr. Joe Dispenza, and they're all just in disbelief that he's been interviewed by some of the biggest names in the health and wellness industry, like Jay Shetty, Lewis Howes, or Dr. Rangan Chatterjee, which adds to his credibility. But again, some of his work does help people who suffer from depression, anxiety, or other mental health issues because it gives them hope and the belief that they can change their lives for the better, which is great. But he should not be giving people false hope that they can be cured of deadly illnesses without medical treatments. And he certainly shouldn't be charging these poor people thousands of dollars just to attend one of his events. I wish everything he talks about were true. And I wish that his practices had actual scientific proof to back them up. But just because somebody says something is true in a very charismatic way doesn't mean that you should trust them. 
And I do believe that there's power in positive thinking and it can help you to overcome cancer or other illnesses. But it doesn't mean that if we don't believe that we can be healed, that it'll hurt our chances of it actually happening. From a psychological point of view, people in need are the easiest to manipulate and they're ready and willing to believe anything that can help them and willing to shell out big bucks in an effort to try. While the internet can be an amazing resource for information, it's also a breeding ground for misinformation, especially when it comes to something as serious as cancer. Anyways, you don't have to take my word for it, but please do your research before you believe anything you read online. You can be optimistic about what you read or hear, but it's important to also be curious and skeptical at the same time. I'll see you in the next video on the best cancer advice on YouTube. Bye for now.